Hello world! Today we are doing the very first tier list of NUS modules and because this is an unofficial tier list, I don't give a about whether you guys think differently of my opinions or not. I have devised a foolproof formula of over 1000 mathematical equations to create this list as well as my one singular opinion of these modules, so let's get straight into it. <laughs> for this tier list, I'm going to be going through modules I've taken semester by semester up to this point, which is 6 semesters for me so far. I think this goes without saying, but it's going to be filled with a lot of computer science modules considering that I am a CS student. Through my intense research, I have formulated the perfect way in which to rank these modules. In the top spot, we have the fun and useful, and in the second spot, we have the fun and useful but you die. And then we have the modules that are just fun, as well as the modules that are just useful. At the bottom half of the tier list, we start with meh. And these comprise of modules that aren't exactly useful or fun to me. And then we get to the poo poo tiers. First up, we have modules that weed out the dumb answers. These are the modules that identify the bell curve tankers and go like, SIT DOWN bitch. And lastly, we have the hot garbage modules where you go like, that was a huge waste of time. And with that out of the way, let's get straight into it. Year 1 Semester 1, CS1101S Programming Methodology 1. The OG of CS modules in NUS. This is the basic CS module that you take as a freshman. This goes into the fun and useful but you die. Honestly, it's an interesting module but goddamn, the workload is intense. You get this gamified platform to work with where there are like weekly challenges that you need to complete. And by weekly, I mean like around two programming assignments per week, which is absolutely nuts. It's one of those modules that you look back on when it's done and think, yeah, that was kind of fun. Although it's not exactly fun when you're inside it. I mentioned it in a previous video of mine, but there were quite a lot of interesting things like a visual novel of sorts that was conceived for the module, as well as a sumo bot competition where you make like this bot with Legos and try to push each other out of the ring. Yeah, the programming examination, a midterm and a final, and both of those were written papers. CS1231, Discrete Structures. Another OG CS module, but for other reasons. It's the first module you take where you learn how to SU because you're probably not going to be doing very well in it. Had a few assignments, a midterm and a final from what I remember. This goes into useful because a lot of the theory taught in this is going to be crucial for your future modules in computer science. It'll teach you these mathematical structures and tools which are required in CS. A lot of computational logic will be learned in this module. And although you might come out of it not really taking away anything, it will subconsciously be ingrained into you to understand after going through it. Take this module seriously. Gel 1000. Quantitative Reasoning. Ah the first of GE modules that all students will have to take. This module teaches you basic reasoning skills on using data to address real-world issues. And all I remember was that it had weekly quizzes, a boring project, a presentation, and a final quiz. I don't remember much, but I believe they teach you to derive conclusions based off of studies and data we've collected as well as teach you ways to analyze these things. I'm gonna be putting this under meh because I don't really know what to feel about this besides the fact that it made me wake up at 8am every Thursday. You freshies might think you can handle 8am lessons. Trust me. Unless you're superhuman. MA1101R, Linear Algebra. This module teaches linear algebra, basically matrix multiplication and more operations on that. This would definitely be useful if you're going to be doing graphics related stuff. Had around four assignments, midterm and a final. You know, pretty standard stuff for a 1k module. I didn't really like this module because of math, but my prof was a hell of a good prof. Prof Unkalun for the win. PC1431, Physics IE. I absolutely hated this module. It taught you concepts and principles of mechanics and thermodynamics. Occasionally had weekly exercises during lecture, which are graded, a midterm and a final. Basically, a shit ton of formulas that I never really understood or really knew how to apply. I did this mod to clear my science requirement, but I really have no idea why I took this when I knew I was not the physics person. Hot garbage. Year 1, Semester 2. CS2030, Programming Methodology 2. This is another OG CS module that every computing student will probably take. This is the sequel to CS1101S, and honestly, it's pretty much just teaching you the Java programming language, as well as object-oriented programming. You get programming assignments every week, as well as a solo programming project spanning a few weeks, which is absolute pain. I don't think there are written assignments, but there were written examinations. This module is the definition of CS workload. It is going to be tough. Going to put this under useful because it really gets you familiar with actual programming work and OOP, which you would probably use at work or in future modules. CS2100, Computer Organization. This is another part of the CS Trinity of 2K modules, and it teaches you the fundamentals of computing devices. So things like how the computer actually works at a more atomic level, how the circuit design is like, the concepts of memory, etc. Fun fact, have you ever wondered how programming languages like Python are programmed? It's by this thing called assembly language, which is more primitive and simplistic, and this in turn is created through machine language, which is basically just ones and zeros. This might sound like an interesting module, but in my opinion, it's so damn dry. Like Sahara Desert dry. The knowledge learned here can actually be pretty useful if you're into things like operating systems and programming languages, I think. I'm gonna put this under modules that weed out the dumb asses. I don't think this is going to be the common opinion amongst most students, but I definitely felt that this one was more complicated to understand. GQ1000, asking questions. This module is a pass-fail module, which every student 
student has to take. Given that it's pass fail, I'm pretty sure 90% of students didn't really give a shit for it because it didn't impact your grades whatsoever. And all you needed to do was just do enough to pass which isn't difficult, honestly. There'll be quizzes and forum posts and an essay, but honestly, you can really just do half the module and you'll still pass. The module is basically just what it is. It's just ask questions. One, one experiment we did was to find the value of the gravitational acceleration of Earth, so 9.81. And obviously the value we calculated was different, like 9.4 or something. Obviously we would say that ours was the wrong value. But then, our TA would then hit us with the Uno universe and ask, Aha, but what if you're right? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, it's a weird module. Matt here. IS1103, Ethics and Computing. Honestly, I don't really remember what I learned in this module. The only thing I remember about this module is that it was a huge pain in the ass for me back in the day. Last part was essays, one essay project thing. Uh, I don't know, man. It was kind of a waste of time. Hot Garbage. MA1521, Calculus for Computing. Uh, this is basically extended calculus from what JC students learn from A-levels. You could study the whole module three days before the actual examination and still get a decent grade. I've had friends that done that. There's only a midterm and a final, and that's about it. In my experience, I don't remember doing any calculus in my computing journey after this particular module. It'll probably come useful for some modules, but it's pretty useless to me so far. Hot garbage. Year 2 Semester 1, CS2040S, Data Structures and Algorithms. This module teaches you about the design and implementation of fundamental data structures and algorithms. It's also the third module of the CS Trinity of 2K modules. So things like arrays, lists, queues, trees and graphs. This is a very important module. A lot of the concepts taught here would be crucial and useful when you go for tech interviews. And the concepts taught here would be used extensively in future programming modules as well. There are going to be weekly programming assignments for this. The thing about this module is that you'll actually be programming a lot less than 2030. But you have to do a lot more thinking and problem solving instead. This module also covers the concepts of time and space. And in computer science, that is very, very important. Time referring to the speed of the program and space referring to how much actual memory and disk space is taken up. Useful tier, CS2106, Introduction to Operating Systems. This module covers basic concepts of operating systems, covers topics like memory management, file systems, etc. Lab assignments are done on Linux and C, and C is some ancient ass programming language. This instantly goes into the modules that weed out the dumb asses. This is one of two notorious modules that I think students usually try to map overseas from what I heard, because it's just so painfully complicated. In my experience, this module felt like three different modules all at once. The lectures, the tutorials, and the lab assignments just felt so drastically different from one another. And I just didn't know what was going on like 60% of the time. It's also the module that I got my first and only D for. ES2660, communicating in the information age. This module gets students to learn how to question and article. <laughs> Basically, a comms module. <laughs> Expect to do some presentations and essays. It also has this segment called Wildcard, where the TA gives you a totally random topic and you have one minute to prepare before presenting on the said topic for about a minute. And by random, I mean totally random. One question I got was about what superhero movies bring to the world or something like that. This is going to be controversial, but I'm going to be putting this into the fun tier. I know a lot of students hate this module with a burning passion, but I actually had quite a bit of fun in this module. It's mainly because me and Robbie and some others were allowed to shit post throughout the entire module. And our TA, shout out to GLD was very accommodating. She even gave us like pastries and muffins every morning. There was one day we had to come up with our own question and this was what one group came up with. It was pretty obvious who were the shit posters because we were laughing for a good 5 to 10 minutes while the other side of the class didn't get what was so funny about it. GET 1020, Darwin and Evolution. It's a popular GE module teaching you about Darwin and how the theory of evolution unfolded. So basically how we came from fish, the monkey, to human. It also goes into a bit of Charles Darwin's life, and he's the guy that came up with the theory of evolution that we know of today. This module was popular because it only had two examinations which were MCQ based, and that's it. Okay, but no cap, this module has one of the best professors you'll get in NUS. His name is John Van Wy, and he's seriously internationally respected with regards to the history of Darwin. He even has a Wikipedia page. When you attend his lectures, there's this real sense of passion and energy in what he's doing, and the way he does some of his storytelling is absolutely intriguing. Definitely would recommend this module. Fun tier. ST2334, Probability and Statistics. This module is pretty much stats in A-levels, but not easy. It covers things like sampling distributions, hypothesis testing, etc. Honestly, this module was tedious and boring. And it's not exactly a module that you can study in 3 days either. I'm gonna put this into hot garbage. I think it might come useful if you're doing things like stats and data science in the future, but to me, it's useless. Year 2 Semester 2, CS2101, Effective Communication for Computing Professionals. Another comms module, and you're taking this in conjunction with CS2103T, the Software Engineering module. It teaches you how to communicate technical info to technical and non-technical audiences, create software documentation, it also covers things like interpersonal and intercultural communication in the workplace and whatnot. Honestly, I actually love this module, and it's up there as one of the most enjoyable modules I've ever had. If not the most enjoyable, I think it's mostly because my classmates just 
just straight up vibing with one another. And I think perhaps it was also because a lot of us took this module as sort of a break from our other CS modules. And we pretty much just fooled around most of the time. Our TA, Dr. Jane, was also very accommodating with us. And I'm pretty sure she was quite fond of my class group as well. Dr. Jane, if you're watching this, uh, please verify down below in the comments. No cap, I'm pretty sure I would have been friends with a bunch of them and I actually did want to ask them out for drinks or something once the module was over. But in the end, I didn't really have the guts to go and ask and Singapore kind of just went into our first lockdown so... <sighs> Content-wise, it's actually a pretty good module. The content taught, whilst not really hard skills, is actually relevant when communicating in a professional sense. And there are certain techniques taught which will definitely come useful in communication in the future, such as BATNA for negotiation, as well as the STAR technique for interviews. Top tier module, CS2103T, Software Engineering. This module will be your first foray into software engineering. In my opinion, this module really exposes you to the wonders of software engineering because you're actually using your programming skills to create something tangible instead of just solving some computing problem. You have this individual project Project where you create a chatbot to do this for yourself and there's also a group project portion where you guys will have to convert an application into something else by refactoring aka changing and adding on to the code this is called a brownfield project so this cs module is going to be a lot more fulfilling compared to the other cs modules that you've probably taken up to this point however the workload on this is disgusting on top of individual milestones you have to hit each week there are also quizzes the group project as well as the final paper fun and useful but you die CS2105, Introduction to Computer Networks. This mod covers a broad introduction to computer networks and network programming. Honestly, I don't remember much from this module, but the information is definitely useful. The only thing I really remember is TCP and UDP, and you can go on Google and find out what those are. Lab assignments were done in Python, so a lot easier to work with than CS2106. It was a core module back in my day, but I don't think it is now. Useful. GEH1019, Food and Health. This module teaches you about the composition of food and educates students on the need for and the composition of a healthy diet. I had about two assignments and a final with negative math. Okay, on a useful practical knowledge standpoint, this module is actually really good. I sort of already knew the surface level details about dieting and nutrition, but this module dives into the science that goes behind it. The only thing holding me back from putting it in the fun and useful tier is the fact that the content wasn't what I actually expected, and there was a lot more science than I thought there would be. Coming to this, everyone also talked about this assignment where you track your nutrition behind three days of food. And from what I saw online, a lot of people found this to be pretty fun. But personally, after going through it, it's just tedious. Normally, when a common person tracks macros, it's really just about how many calories you've consumed, how much protein, how much fat, how much carbs. But this assignment had you tracking things like vitamin B12, magnesium, potassium, and just all these atomic things that you really had to dig around for. It was a painful process. GES1038, la copy, la, la copy, la copy. <laughs> Forging of the Chinese Singaporean community. This mod introduces students to how the Chinese Singaporean community in Singapore sort of came about. It covers some interesting things like how the Chinese community has evolved from being a community with multiple languages to a single unified language. For this mod, you had a few group presentations, a few quizzes, a research essay, and some in-class exercises. Honestly, I'm not really too sure about this one. I didn't have much time to spend on this because of my other CS modules. I would say that the history I learned from this module was really interesting and if I was more efficient, I would have gladly watched most of the webcasts. It was fun because these are events that my ancestors myself have gone through and a bunch of the events I brought up to my parents were things that they remember from their childhood as well. Ah shit, forgot to put... Okay, useful tier. Fun tier. NM2213, Introduction to Human Computer Interaction Design. This is an introductory module to the field of user experience design, more commonly known as UX design. It details the study, planning, and design of interaction between users and computers. There were many assignments each week, as well as this project, which spanned the second half of the semester. I believe there was a final paper as well. I love this module. I was already interested in UI UX design before this, so hearing about this module was something that really interested me. Sidetrack, I got really inspired into UI UX design because of Persona 5, because that game's UI design is absolutely amazing. It's so good that you have people cosplaying as the UI. This module is just a really well designed module with just the right amount of workload in my opinion. The content learned is actually useful and practical to what is practiced in the outside world. It also has one of my favorite profs in NUS, Prof Alex Mitchell, who's just a really fun and chill professor. Fun fact, he's the head of the interactive media development minor for computing and fast students and this is the minor that I'm pursuing. You'll see his name pop up in another module in the next semester. Top tier module. Year 3 Semester 1 CS3219 Software Engineering Principles and Patterns This module focuses more on the architectural design of software engineering. Architecture refers to the way you structure your code and how each part interacts with one another. Honestly, I don't remember learning much from this module and all I remember are the all-nighters I pulled because of the project and I played around with Webpack technologies a little. This module was kind of mad to me because overall it's not an outright horrible module. I just didn't really take away much from it besides a few theoretical concepts. CS3230 Design and Analysis of Algorithms Ah, the 
the second notoriously difficult module. It supposedly teaches you different techniques of designing and analyzing algorithm. Okay, basically in most cases, you don't have to explicitly create an algorithm. And it's more of explaining how to come up with an algorithm that solves the problem. This module is super theoretical and it's a lot more writing than actually programming. There are about three written assignments, two programming assignments, a midterm and a final. This is one of the worst modules I've taken in my three years of computer science. I was pretty much lost for 80% of the module. In my opinion, this module is pretty overkill and it's definitely a module that weeds out the dumb answers. CS3240 Interaction Design This module teaches what goes on behind the interaction design process in HCI related systems. It's similar to NM2213 but focuses more on the actual prototyping and implementation using applications like Balsamic for low fidelity wireframing as well as Figma for high fidelity prototyping. There are also assignments that bring you through the whole UX design process and a group project on that as well. This module actually teaches you useful technologies that's used in the real world. The concepts and processes they teach you are also widely used. So I would say that this module is definitely useful if you're into UX and product design. And honestly, creating your own designs or revamping outdated UI is pretty fun too. I learned a lot about interaction design related work from this module. Honestly, the workload for my semester was absolutely insane. Most students took this CS module as they assumed there would be more fluff as compared to other CS modules. They thought this had no coding. Little did they know that they'll be spending more time on this module than their other modules. Fun and useful, but you die. CS3241 Computer Graphics This mod teaches you some basic graphics related concepts as well as terminologies. There's programming assignments about every two weeks as well as examinations. I personally did not really have fun with this module because there was a lot of math involved and I was pretty much done with math at this point. So things like matrix multiplication, vectors, blah blah blah. I was not pleased. <laughs> I wanted to make Kirby in 3D, not rack my brains as to how to do three layers of ray tracing. I'm gonna put this into the math here. NM3216 Game Design This module teaches you the basic elements of gameplay as well as game design inside a game development process. Things like game mechanics, dynamics, progression, replayability, balancing risk and reward, the concept of flow, game fuel and juice, and more. <laughs> Absolutely jam-packed with value. Two projects, one to create a board game and one to create a computer game as well as three mini essays. Another top tier module by Prof Alex Mitchell. Personally think that the theories covered in this module were very very useful in the realm of game design and it definitely provokes a lot more thought when you go out and play a game. You start to realize that there's a lot more structure to games than just having an idea and creating a game. This gives you a much better appreciation into the world of game development. This isn't limited to just video games, as a lot of board games uses these concepts as well. Fun fact about Prof Alex, his favourite game is Shadow of the Colossus. If you're a gamer or someone interested in game development, I highly recommend this module for you. Top tier. Year 3 semester 2 This was the worst semester I've had and it's also the semester that I started my YouTube channel because I was just so detached from college. CS3203 Software Engineering Project Instant Hot Garbage Easily one of the worst modules I've taken ever. This module is basically another software engineering module but it's double the workload because it's 8 MCs. Basically we had to create a program that would be able to do some things. This is hot garbage as I'm pretty sure the only thing most of the students gained from this module was better proficiency at C++. Other than that we took all sorts of L's. Mental health? L. Time which could have been used for something more productive and useful? L. Brain space for content which actually matters? <laughs> L. I learned absolutely nothing from this module. For those in the software engineering space, hear me out. Requirements are already set out for you. You can't really choose the type of software development lifecycle either because the requirements are already set. Basically, it's waterfall. The software architecture is pretty much decided for you as well. And you're also spending half the time learning this theoretical programming language that was conceived purely for this module. They actually created quizzes and tests on this theoretical programming language. That it's, that is purely for the module. <laughs> I have no idea if it benefits anyone taking programming languages as a focus. And mind you, it's double the workload of a normal module. But I felt like triple, honestly. You know what's the best part? This module is pretty much unchanged from 10 years ago. It could go even further back and we wouldn't know. Overall, this module is just a big hot mess. My problem with a lot of NUS computing modules is that they don't exactly teach you things that are required in the job market. The modules tend to feel outdated. And I find myself thinking that you have to add a lot of extra learning on top of a uni coursework just to actually learn what will get you higher in the tech space. This is 100% hot garbage. CS3247 Game Development Project This module introduces techniques for electronic game design and programming. It has a project, some programming and written assignments, and a final of sorts. Honestly, theory-wise, I don't recall learning much from this module. No one really paid much attention to the lectures, as the real learning was in the game project and the technologies itself. For the record, we learned how to use the Unreal Engine. The experience of the game development process is really going to be down to your group mates. I didn't have the best experience, but I wouldn't exactly call it the worst either. At the end of it, we would have to present at this competition called STEPS, where industry professionals will actually 
come down and watch as well. So it's actually a good opportunity to impress them and potentially find an internship or a job. My group actually got approached by a small gaming company. Although, <laughs> as you can tell, <laughs> I didn't get an offer. I would consider this module as pretty fun as you get to play games and what. CS4218, Software Testing. This module covers concepts and the practice of software testing. It has project work as well as two examinations. This module is sort of in the middle for me. It's not the worst, but not the best either. I learned a lot of useful ways to conduct tests for software, so I say there's quite a lot of value in this module. This would be especially so if you're looking to become something like a QA tester or a test engineer. Useful tier. ACC 1701X, Accounting for Decision Makers. Finally, the last module. This module provides an introduction to accounting from a user perspective. And the focus is on teaching you to utilize accounting to make better decisions as an investor. I'm gonna be honest, I barely paid attention to this module at all, even though I really, really wanted to. This semester was just all around horrific, and my time management, as we all know, isn't the best. But basically, this module will be really useful if you want to dive into the financial reports of companies you're looking to invest in and whatnot. It teaches you how to read and interpret these reports, and that would then help you in making decisions on whether to invest in the company or not. Useful module. And yeah, that's it for the module tier list. This is actually my second round recording this because somehow all my recordings got wiped out <laughs> right after I finished the first round. I am jaded. <laughs> Before I end off the video, I want to say that these rankings have no relation to the professors or the teaching team involved in these modules, unless I mention them. That basically means that a shit module doesn't mean that the professor and the teaching team is bad. Okay, and that is it for the unofficial official NUS modules tier list by the worst computer science student in NUS. I hope it was informative or entertaining to you, so do leave a like and sub if you enjoyed it. Probably going to be working on more college related content when the semester starts, so look out for that. And yeah, with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!